if I say to you that one day you might look like this? Let your imagination run wild. Still weird, isn't it? Though I think some elephants might just find him attractive. He doesn't look so bad. OK, so what if I say now that one day we might walk around, if needed, with organs taken from different animals? Now, that's a tantalizing idea, isn't it? If needed. And that's when I'm going to tell you a little bit about a new technology that we have developed in the field of organ transplantation. So what is organ transplantation? It's nothing. It's a, it's a life-saving treatment. There is no doubt about it. Where you replace a diseased or a sick organ with a, from a healthy person. So you take it from one individual to another individual. Sounds simple. And actually, today, there are several organ transplants that have been carried out. Lungs, hearts, livers, you name it, you have it. However, not everything is simple in this case. You have several problems. And one of the major problems, as you will later on hear again, is a lack of organ donors. There are thousands and thousands of patients all around the world with threatening, life-threatening diseases waiting for an organ transplant. But alas, they cannot get it because we do not have organ available. One other important problem that we have is that when I transplant an organ from one individual to another individual, the patient or the per individual who gets the organ will see it as foreign and will fight it away. So it will reject. The second person will reject the organ. And to curb this, we use lifelong drugs. You can actually bring down this fighting ability that you have in the body by giving, but there's a problem with taking these drugs, especially since they're lifelong. Some of the common factors that you can see, or the side effects, is that you get infections, they damage, these long-term drugs will damage organs, vital organs like livers, lungs, kidneys, pancreas, you name it. And they also are associated with a higher risk for developing cancer. So we have a problem now. How do we solve? And just, about, just like every other research around the world, we're always trying to find solutions to problems. So we thought, OK, what is it that we are lacking? We are lacking organs. So we asked ourselves, can we create organs in the laboratory? That would be a solution. And then he said, OK, I need to create an organ. What do I do for that? Well, in order to create an organ, I would need a three-dimensional scaffold, a supporting material for me to, de to design it. And from that supporting material, I can probably create something good for someone. OK, I can use synthetic materials. I can use these nanoparticles, all the fantastic new techniques that are available. But it would not be the same, because our organs are so complex. You have all these uh, blood vessels and networks of nerves and so on. It will not be the same if I use a synthetic material. So suddenly the thought came, why not use that which nature offers? And what nature offers? is that you have organs, organs that are discarded. So what we realize is that not all organs are used for transplantation from a dead donor. So we said, OK, if we take these organs, maybe we can redesign these organs. This is something which nature is given. So I have this organ in my hand, which is not being used for transplantation. It is, of course, after the permission from the relatives. So I have this organ in my hand. And I say, OK, I can use this. I can use this and give this organ to any one of you or to me if I'm a patient who needs it. But what's the difference between this organ and me? The major difference is that the cells which are in this organ are different from mine. And therefore, if I put this organ in me, I am definitely going to reject it. We know that. So I wanted a three-dimensional structure 
where I could take away the cells. Mind you, it's a little bit tricky to get these complicated organs because I want to remove only the cells, but I want my three-dimensional structure and integrity still left there. So how do I do this? OK, so we tried several different methods, and this is the result of, without going into details, but this is the uh, summarization of it. This is a blood vessel, as you see. And using several different solutions, what you can do is actually release the cells from the tissue. We try, we take away all the red blood cells, we take away all the cells that make the tissue, and then lastly, we wash it with antibiotics so that we can have a nice, clean one, because even when you're working outside the body, you can have access to bacterial infections and viral infections, so you clean it. So now what do I have? I have a nice, fine scaffold, empty, skelet, where I can now redesign exactly the way I want. It's completely free of the cells, but three-dimensional structure is still there. That's a great advantage for me. So how do I do now? Now I have this in hand, and I would like to redesign it. How do I redesign it? I can do so by taking special cells, which are called stem cells. And every one of us here, all of us around the world, have these so-called specialized stem cells. And what are these stem cells? These are immature cells, which can become, have, or I should say, have the potential to become any cell of the body. They can become intestinal cells, they can be nerve cells, muscle cells, you name it, you have it. So they have the potential. They're very special cells, and we all of us have it. In small numbers, but they are there. So I can take these cells. Another very important factor with the cells are that they have a growing capacity, which is absolutely tremendous. So very small numbers, you can actually expand them to large numbers. From hundreds, you can go to thousands and millions. So what I can do is now grow these cells. So take a small number of cells from you and grow them to large numbers. And then I can now introduce it into the scaffold, the skeleton which is still left after taking away the cells. But the three-dimensional structure still remains. And then once I've introduced the cells into that, I then put it into an environment where I totally spoil the, uh, the matrix pamper it completely. I give it good food, well, just like all of us, it enjoys all the good stuff, the fat, the uh, nutrients, everything, the right temperature, everything. We eat it. You people talk to each other, we talk to ourselves, and they reply. They reply by actually growing. So that's the best communication that we have with ourselves. So now you have a fantastic three-dimensional organ, which is completely recellarized with any of the cells from any one of you or from the patient who's going to receive the cell. So it has been now tailor-made to the patient. So now I would like to tell you a little bit about, so we have this in hand, but we were not sure if this is going to work in the body. So we got an opportunity to try out uh, whether this uh, type of tissue-grown uh, structures could grow in the body and be functional. And I'll give you two examples. And what is important to remember is that both these patients, which I'm going to talk about, received this laboratory created or engineered grafts. And none, none of them, neither of them, I should say, has received any immunosuppression or drugs so far. So, because what we did was to actually engineer it to tailor make it for these patients. So the first one was a 10-year-old girl who came to us. She had no or very little blood supply from the intestine to the liver. She was always very tired. Apart from these medical problems, she was always tired. She never went to school. She couldn't speak. She could not articulate. She did not go up in weight or height. Completely tired. Did not take part in any physical activities. So she was really a very, very tired little girl who had been suffering for 10 years because she was born with this disorder. So then we decided, OK, how should we try and help her? So we took a blood vessel from a dead donor, and we did exactly what I told you about, the same technique. We stripped 
the entire blood vessel of her cells, of the donor cells, and then you can see it becomes like a white scaffold. So this is a scaffold which has its three-dimensional structure, but there are no cells of the donor left. And what we did, and here you can see clearly, on the left-hand side, this is how it looks when it's normal. You can see all the black spots. These are all cells that are there. And on the right-hand side is the vein where we have taken away all the cells. So you can see all these holes, but the three-dimensional structure is still left. And that was good. Because now what we could do is isolate these cells from her body, stem cells from her body, and use them to introduce it into this scaffold that we had made. And then you can see at the left-hand side all the green the green lining that you see, there are her cells and the red cells on the right-hand side are also her cells. These are two cell types that make up blood vessels in our body. So we had a new constructed blood vessel which could now be given to the little girl. But we didn't know if it's going to work or function in the body. And this is how it looks when our surgeon transplanted the vein. And we all were so uh, excited at the same time, very, very nervous. So we remember when our surgeon called up and said, fantastic, she has started, the blood flow has started into her liver. And that's when we went, yes! Because we didn't know. It looked very nice in vitro, in our hands, it looked, felt very good, but we didn't know if it ever worked. We didn't know if it would withstand the pressure. But when he said that the blood was flowing immediately into her liver, that's when we realized, yes, we have made definitely an advancement. So, and then we, I'll just show you very quickly, a 68-year-old old man who had all these problems with his windpipe, the trachea. For several years, for 40 years, he had been suffering. So we decided we will do a similar uh, study, that we would give him a tailor-made trachea or windpipe. And here you can see that it is the windpipe that we have made. The pink color is the windpipe with his cells having a lot of nutrition to grow. And then this is how it looks like when the R surgeon operated. So the, all the black stitches are the place where the uh, trachea was or the windpipe was operated into the patient. Mind you, none of these patients, neither of these patients have taken any drugs. Okay, so now I would like to end my talk by telling you a little bit. Now we have, we have this technology available, but what do we do for the future? What do we see? How do we see the future? Actually, before I retire as a scientist, I want to see at least three different visions to come true. The first one is redesigning complicated organs. And now I'm going to show you some little, a little bit fun here, an excitement. So, so far I talked to you about simple organs, such as blood vessels and trachea. But now we do not want, we are not satisfied with just that. We want to go on further ahead, and what we want to do is carry out more complicated organs, such as the liver. Now, this is just one lobe of the liver, as you can see. And what we want to do is take human stem cells and actually recellularize or recreate a liver for our patients in the future. Here, we would like to see in the very near future what we want to do is take a complicated organ such as the voice box, or what is called as the larynx. Here you can see it's very complicated. You have all these different blood vessels and all the different tissues. Each tissue piece here has a different cell type. So it's a real challenge for us. We have to grow all these different stem cells and to see that this really works and functions in the future. So this is how the larynx will look. But we are very hopeful in the future. OK. I have to now try and. So one of our attempts that here, which we did, you can see the liver piece that we have taken. That was how it looks when you take away all the cells. And this is how it looks when you actually put human stem cells, and you get almost a piece. This is just a small piece, of course. We have not succeeded with the whole liver. But just to show you that still there is a very good possibility that you can get back a more complicated organ such as the liver again by using these stem cells. Okay, the next thing I want to tell you is about the next vision is to recycle organs. 
So what do I mean by recycling organs? Today, after childbirth, we throw away thousands and thousands of placenta and amniotic membrane. Now, you know, placenta is a bag which surrounds the fetus. And once the baby is born, you throw away the, feet, uh, the placenta, and you throw away the membrane that sits around the placenta. This is a wastage. Because as you know, the placenta is a bag that actually is responsible for giving food and nutrition to the baby. So why throw it away? Instead, you can actually take the placenta. This is how it looks. It's like a big, huge <laughs> bag where we have taken away all the cells. You can see this. And what you can do with this is that you can actually, we were planning to give this to our surgeons to use it as a filling material. Because right now, this placenta, oh, this placenta has, no, <laughs> has no cells. So it's sort of inert. It's not going to give it any immunological reaction. So I can take this and actually use it to fill cheeks of patients who, for example, have had cancer and have been taken away. Thighs, legs, hands, you name it. So as filling material, you can this, use this placenta. Why throw it away? You can also, because as I said, it's, a, it's, a, it's an organ that produces so many good stuff, you can extract a lot of growth factors, nutrition, lots of stuff which you can, proteins, which can be used in the future. And also remember that the placenta has fantastic numbers of stem cells. That's a fantastic source. So to throw it away, to me, is a really waste, a true waste. Similarly, this is the amniotic membrane that sits around the placenta, we throw away. What we are doing now is that we want to take this amniotic membrane and use it as a frame to make, create skin. So you can put this around, thin membrane around, and actually add stem cells to make skin. Something which we're just throwing away, which is a pity. And my last grand finale idea that I have for the future is to recycle and redesign animal organs. As I said before, this is a possibility. And there's a shortage of organ donors. We are going to have this problem for a long time. So maybe it's time to start thinking different, beyond borders, beyond human beings. And this is to show you, this is how a human heart looks. And this is how a pig heart looks, where we have taken away all the cells. Smaller in size, but that depends on which, from which pig you have taken it. But, you see, they look very similar. You have the possibility of using these organs to actually make human organs. So, this is how the pig heart looks from the very beginning. This is how it looks when I take away the cells from the pig. It's no longer a pig heart. And then, when I put on the right hand side, you see it's, heart, it's a pig heart which has been recellularized with human heart stem cells. So right now what we are doing is we want to get this heart to beat. That's a challenge, but it's something I definitely see as a future. So I would like to end by saying that I think this is just the beginning of a technology, of an era where there's going to be an explosion of scientific technology, which is going to change our future, which is going to give hope and life to thousands and thousands of patients with life-threatening diseases. Thank you very much.